Hey folks, my knife here, back with episode 12 of Let's Play Terraformcraft. And in this episode, we're finally going to make ourselves some decent armor. But before we get to that, I want to show off a few of the things I did in between episodes. Oh, I guess the first thing to show you is... Hmm, notice anything different here? Well, let's take a view from the front. Yeah, yeah. See, lovely, lovely uh, copper chest plate that I'm wearing there. And no, I didn't, uh, I didn't go and make myself armor while you guys weren't watching. What happened is I was doing some work out in the, uh, the backyard and there was a, uh, a spear skeleton, uh, hiding under a tree and he had a full set of copper armor on him. So we did battle and he took a lot of beating before he finally went down and, but he did drop this. He did drop this lovely little, uh, copper chest plate here, which... Actually, usually the stuff that the drops you get from mobs tend to be pretty crappy. Like they're, they're almost, you know, they've only got a couple more blows left in them. But this thing still has like about a third of its uh, endurance left. So that's pretty cool. But nonetheless, we're going to build ourselves something even better a little bit later in the episode. On the, I think, first episode of the Chicken Quest, I ran into a number of places where I found uh, Cassiterite on the ground. So I went back to the nearest of those and mined it out. And now we have a bunch of Cassiterite, so we can make bronze, regular bronze with that. And while I was mining that out, it turned out that there was also some, uh, a large bismuth deposit there, so we have even more bismuth. Um, and Sphalerite here, if I don't know if you remember from last episode, all I had was just this little stuff that I found lying around. Well, a lot of this stuff was I, I had picked up just around my area here, so I knew that there was sphalerite out here. And uh, as it turned out, there was the deposit was just in behind the uh, the animal pens that I have out there. So I went and mined that out as well. Whoops, wrong one. So we have a good supply of sphalerite and bismuth, which means that we have uh, everything we need to make a ton of bismuth bronze as well, which is what we'll make the armor out of later. And while I was out there, doing the doing the considerate mine um, the other thing I'd run into during chicken quest is I'd found a bunch of come across a bunch of fruit trees so my inv inventory was too full to uh, pick them up at the time so I swung by those and pick them up now I have a banana tree sapling lemon tree sapling and peach tree sapling so let's uh, let's go out and get those planted oh something else I'm gonna want to show off so many things to show off um, what do we have out here? Uh, the chickens. Now, if you remember, we bred, the, we started breeding the chickens at the end of the last episode when I finally got them all pinned up. Uh, and because of the peculiarity of the chicken breeding, they're still using vanilla breeding. So that means that you can actually breed them once or twice a day. Um, possibly even more often than that, but it seems like about twice a day is the limit. So you can see I'm already up to, what is it, five or six chicks in there. Sometimes they hide under the, the adults. But, and Oh, that's right. Actually, more than that, because you see now I'm up to four roosters, and I only had two before. So two of the chicks, have all, the first two chicks we have had have already um, matured into, into roosters. So, so soon we'll be able to breed them as well. Um, somewhere around here, some, oh yeah, you can see we have a couple of extra sheep roaming around. <clears throat> These were some of the babies that, uh, the lambs, I guess, that glitched out of here. And now they're wandering around just like these baby, these piglets, or ex-piglets now, perhaps. They've glitched all over the place as well. Ah, well, it has a little bit of life to the place. Um, these are the two fruit trees we planted last time. And they've already grown some, uh, some foliage, as you can see. And the, this is the red apple tree? Yeah. And, well, actually, maybe I should make signs for them. That's a good idea. And so it's already got some blossoms on it. And this is the olive tree. No blossoms on it yet. I'm not sure when it does. We also started our uh, willow uh, tree. Actually, before we do that, let's finish planting our... Let's uh, finish doing up our... Uh, do, 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 do. What do you call it? Orchard. Yeah. Yeah, what do you want? Yeah. Are you ram tough? Okay. So there's our banana tree. Peach, peach, just peachy. Oh, we can put a peach tree there. And the lemon tree. 
Lemon tree, very pretty. Okay, so those guys are set. Anyway, so we had also set up our willow farm. And so here's where we get to demonstrate the true power of the scythe. So it's been a couple of times when I've needed sticks and I've run out. That's never going to happen again. Because the willow trees have lots and lots of leaves. And this is what the scythe was meant for. Oh, you just take a few whacks of the scythe and, and it's leaves galore and you get lots of replacement saplings for when you chop down the willow. It's awesome. Especially if you've ever, like, had a willow, uh, if you've ever played this game and you had a willow farm before you had a scythe and so you were going and whacking them by hand to get all the sticks and that, man. This is such a relief. So even with that, what have I got? I probably got at least two stacks of... Yeah, <laughs> two full stacks. Well, this one was, wasn't full before, so it's now full. Two full stacks and start on another one. So this is cool. So later on I'll come back and chop these down and that'll let me top up my um, my charcoal pit. Which is, the uh, of course, the other reason for doing this out here. Okay. Um, let's see, I showed you a chest plate. I showed you the ores. Um, the f we've done the fruit trees, and I showed you the animals, I guess that's about it. This is some experiments I'm doing up here, um, on roofing. Uh, I have a lot more to do yet. When, when I get further along with it, I'll show you, and I'm going to let you guys vote on what you think is the best approach. So, let's get in here. So, next thing we want to do, well, let's hang this up, so it's not my way. All right, so this if you'll recall, is our stone anvil. It was just a piece of raw stone. Uh, had to be one of the harder types, so this one is basalt. That we tapped on top of the stone hammer, which turned, which brought up the uh, anvil interface, and we dropped the hammer in here to secure it as an anvil. And right now all we're doing with it is we're just using it to store some, uh, some molds full of copper that we want to keep hot because they don't lose their temperature. Well, uh, so everything we've done with metal in the past, we've had it at liquid, uh, we've, we've had it in these molds at liquid temperatures. You notice these aren't liquid anymore. That's because I had them out for a while. And we poured it into a mold like, like this one here, a shape mold. So these are chisel molds here. And then that gave us tool heads. Well, when we're working with bigger things like armor, or if we want to make metal anvils, um, we can't do it with molds anymore. That's, it's too big to do with molds. We actually have to, um, we have to like weld ingots together to make bigger chunks of metal and we have to hammer them away on the anvil. You know, it's referred to as forging. We have to forge it into the shapes we want. And that's where the anvil interface really comes important. So the first step in that <coughs> is to get ingots of these things. So you have to let these molds cool down until they're solid. And then you just put them in your interface, in your crafting interface, and you get a, uh, and you get an ingot out of it. Now, if you take the ingot out just by clicking on it, right clicking on it, and bring it down, then you get it while it's still at temperature. If you shift click it out, then you'll get it cold. So the approach you use depends on whether you want to continue working it, in which case you want to make sure that it stays hot, or if you want to just stack it up, in which case it needs to be cold. But in this case, we want to continue working it. So the next thing we need... Uh, oh, it's over here. There it is. This is flux. Now, earlier we just used the flux to create lime water. <clears throat> and here's its other use. It goes in here in the, uh, in the anvil interface. And the purpose of flux is basically to keep, um, to keep oxide from forming on the, uh, on the outsides of these ingots because we're going to try and weld them together. And if, if an oxide coating forms on there, it's going to prevent us from welding together. So, so when we're welding, we need flux in here and a hammer in here. And we have two ingots here that have to be at working temperature. And I don't remember what the working temperature of copper is, but it's, I think it's something like bright red, uh, two stars in around there. So anything at that level or above, as long as it's, it's not liquid. We just click the weld button, bam. That uses up one flux, makes a lovely ringing sound that you'll eventually get very tired of. 
and take some of the endurance off of our hammer. And now we have this double ingot. So the next thing we do is go over into this part of the interface. And the first thing we need to do is take this double ingot and bash it down into a... Hmm, actually, why isn't it... Oh! <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself here. First, we have to make an anvil. Okay, this is a stone anvil. I cannot work copper on a stone anvil. I can weld it. That's all I can do with it, but I can't work it. So we need to build ourselves a copper anvil. How could I have forgotten that? Okay, so for that we're going to need seven of these uh, double ingots, and it's okay to let them cool. So you can see here we've got two more left over from when we were uh, building copper things before. And, oh yeah, first we have to try and turn those in, into ingots. Now you see these are still liquid, so if I put them in here, I can't take the liquid out. I can't take an ingot out of it, so we have to let them cool a bit. And while they're cooling... Do I have it on me? Oh, there's isn't one. While they're cooling... I've got some copper over here that I want to start uh, smelting. So we can make more ingots. Ah, they're getting pretty close. Actually, we want to be in this interface. Orange four star solid. So that turns into an ingot. That turns into an ingot. And once again, we put them up here. Weld them together. And now we have two of the seven that we need. So i got to wait a little while. It's going to be eight game hours. Oh, actually, it's night. I can sleep that away. Oh, so we won't have to wait that long after all. Ah, the advantages of nighttime. And, oh, look, it's all ready. I love that. Okay, let's pick these guys up. Uh, get you out of the way. And I'm... Oh, I got them all here. Okay. And this is going to get tricky because I've got a lot of copper here that I've got to... Uh... I've got to try mage all at the same time. What do I have? I have a thousand units of copper here, so I'll be ten. Oh, that's not too bad. <clears throat> ten molds worth, I think I can, I've got room for that. I don't know if you remember earlier, in an earlier video I was talking about how one nice thing about having the uh, forge and keeping around your anvils, your old anvils even after you upgrade, is, are those slots in them for keeping things warm? So obviously the more anvils you have, the more spaces you have for keeping stuff warm. So let's move those guys into there. This guy's into there. And there we go. We've drained that guy of his copper. <clears throat> okay, so now I just have to wait for these guys to cool down enough that they solidify, and then I can turn turn them into ingots, and then weld them, as I did with these two guys, and until I have seven of them, and then I can make a a, uh, an, a a copper anvil. And so that's really not going to be anything new for you guys to learn or observe. It's going to be boring, so I think I will... Uh, just speed up this chunk of the film and provide you with some invigorating music as we do it. So, I'll see you when we're at the when we're ready to actually make the anvil.
now that we have our seven double ingots, we put them into an eye shape on a crafting table. That gives us our copper anvil. Boom. And uh, one difference to notice between the metal anvils and the stone anvil is the stone anvil only stays an anvil as long as there's the hammer in this slot here, but with the metal anvils, they're always anvils, whether you have a hammer in them or not. You can't use them without a hammer, but they don't turn into a big block of iron or a big block of metal without it. So we need a hammer there. We're going to want our flux. Okay, so now, with this and something else that I'll show you in a little bit, uh, we could now start making ourselves copper armor, kind of like the uh, this breastplate, chest plate that I have. But since we already have everything we need to step up to bronze, let's just go directly to our bronze anvil. Or go to bronze armor, which will require a bronze anvil. So that's the next thing we do. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is mix up a whole bunch of bronze so we can make enough double ingots to make our bronze anvil. So that's again going to take some time, so I will probably just skip over it instead of giving you the, the funny music. So I'll see you when that's done. Okay, I thought I'd bring you back in for the last two. Um, you can see there, it just changed now, that with the bismuth bronze, it actually, even though it's you know tougher and stronger than copper, it has a lower melting point. So we have to wait for it to cool down even further than we did with the copper before we can use it. So we'll weld that up. Now we have the seven we need, and as we've seen before, make the anvil we just put that into the eye shape and get that guy out of the way put our anvil down there and you'll note I can use a copper hammer with an iron anvil it doesn't matter what kind of hammer you use with you can use any kind of hammer with any kind of anvil even stone if, <laughs> if you're in a pinch all that matters well, the only difference it makes is the durability Okay, oh, I better work on these guys pretty fast. Okay. Now, first thing we want to do is make some armor. So I've, I've made up some more bronze here, so let's get that cooling, first of all. Yeah, this is going to take a bit, so I'll skip skip ahead again. See you in a bit. Okay, so I've got it all poured out and sorted around now. So the first thing we're going to make is, um, oh, let's make a helmet. So a bismuth bronze helmet. So for that, we're going to need uh, two uh, sheets of metal. Now, to make a sheet of metal, you first have to make a double ingot here. Then you come over here, and you have to pound this flat into a sheet. Now you'll notice down below that those two markers I talked about, the red marker has moved to the right. So what I have to do is use these green buttons here to move the marker to the right and the red markers to move it to the left. The, those black wings around the red guy, I have to get them within that to successfully make a sheet. And the other thing is there's rules up here telling me what my last three hits have to be. So I, my last three hits have to be any hit, any hit, any hit. So basically I have to end off with some combination of these three different sizes of hits. So basically I just do a bam, 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 and then we go hit, hit, and hit, and we have our bronze sheet. Okay. Now are these guys still warm enough for me to work? Let's find out. If you hear some weird sound on the microphone right now, that is one of my cats brushing his head up against the microphone. Okay, so we work this guy down into a sheet as well, just like before. And now we've got our two sheets of metal. And these guys, I'm afraid, are just going to end up cooling off before we can do anything else with them. Because I have to demonstrate to you now what the next step is. And for that, we need to take one of these sheets and we have to actually form it into the shape of a helmet. And in order to do that, we need a plan for the helmet. So, uh, these guys are both empty, right? Oh, he's not empty yet. Uh, he's cold, though. So... Okay, now for a plan, we need a piece of paper, which I happen to have here. We'll need a feather, 
which I got from the chicken that died in the jungle before I got to it. Um, and we need some wood. Some planks, rather. Whoops. There we go. And so we're going to make a scribing table. A scribing table looks like that. We'll plop it down here. And put some paper in there. And then we need ink. Especially we need these markings, and we're going to need more of them. Okay. And you draw out your plans the same way you do, you know, pretty much anything else. So, um, when we did the, uh, oh, I guess I never did a leather helmet, but if we were doing a helmet out of leather, the pattern would look like this. And same thing as when we're doing up a plan for a metal helmet, it's the same, same pattern, only done in ink. Um, what did we do? Oh, we did do a chest plate. So, did a leather chest plate. It looked like this. And that indeed gives us a plan for a chest plate. Uh, boots are, I believe, like that? No. Hmm. What have I done wrong on the boots? Ah, there we go. And what does that leave us with? Oh, the greaves. Basically, pants. Now, we can also do tools. Like, um, in addition to, like, pouring out the tools that we used to do, we could also make uh, plans for a tool and then hammer them out forward. So, for example, the chisel. You know, it's basically the same thing as when we were making the uh, clay form, clay mold for the chisel. We pressed a, you know, a line into the unfired clay, straight line, and that gave us a chisel mold. Well, putting down a line of ink here gives us a chisel plan. Um, you know, what are some of the other things we did? Uh, oh yeah, pick head, for example, was... And same thing here, so you can get a pickaxe head this way as well. So that, uh, not too interesting yet when we have bronze. Later on when we get into basically iron and steel and things like that, they can't be poured in a mold and the only way you can make tool heads is to forge them. So we'll get more into that later. But now we have our plan. So we can come here. We put our first sheet of bronze there and where's our helmet? Put the plan for the helmet there. And once again, the red marker down below has moved to a certain position. It's not always the same position for everything and I think it actually it changes from uh, seed to seed. So you know even if you're doing a bronze helmet it'll be in a slightly different position in this world than it would if I was in another world. So you have to kind of learn it each time. And we have a different set of rules up here. So I want to end up within those black wings and the last three hits have to be a bend, a bend, and a hit. So this guy twice, and then one of these hits. Okay, so, um, what's going to work well here? Bend, bend, and hit. Okay, and now I have an unfinished bro bismuth bronze helmet. I have to weld the second sheet onto that make it a bit bigger and I have to finish it off and it's the same set of rules I have to hit again now the thing is is to be able to succeed I have to get the green marker within those black wings around the red marker but the closer I get to the red marker itself uh, the better it'll be so basically any distance I am away from the red marker marker will lower the durability of the final product so let's see what we get here one two medium hit yeah see so it's pretty good on this one is it's not quite it's very very close to full durability there wouldn't be a bar at all if i'd gotten it perfectly on but that's still it's pretty good so we can put on our helmet uh, i guess let next let's do the boots oh we're gonna need to uh oh right fortunately i have some guys here 
Oh, these don't stack, eh? Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. who's good here? Here, yellow. Here, yellow. Yeah, so boots are also take just two single sheets. And these guys we're going to have to reheat. I have a few here that are still warm, but these guys are going to need to be reheated. So I can use my forge to reheat anything that's gotten too cold. Do, 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 do. How are these guys doing? Orange three, they got a little ways to go yet. So the only thing I want to be careful here is that they don't melt again. I mean, you know, it's not a killer if they melt, but then I'm going to have to wait for them to cool down again. So, I, you know, the perfect thing for me is just get them up into the, you know, into the bright red or the orange territory where they're workable again and then start working on them. Okay, these guys should be closing in on it. I think they solidify at one at orange with one star. Yeah, there we go. Oop, lost that mold. Okay, so we can weld those two guys together. Oh, this guy's still liquid. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. There you go. And well, those two guys together. Okay, now we pound this guy flat into a sheet again. And pound this guy flat into a sheet. And where's the plan? Boots. Okay, so this guy we want to end off with a shrink, a bend, and a bend. Shrink is this guy. Bend. So those are all rightward movements. Shrink, bend, bend. So I want to be quite a ways away. Oh, that's too far. Um, let's come back with a medium hit. Shrink. No, it's still too far. Let's come back even further. Shrink, bend, bend. Eh. Not that close, but I don't I don't know whether you have to be close on doing the unfinished one or only on the finished one or on both. So that's something I've never really figured out. But the next thing to do is to weld on the other sheet. And now we're gonna try for it again. So it didn't work out too well last time. So no. Shrink, bend, bend. Ooh, that was good. Look how close we got. Yeah, so it must just be on the finished one where the how close you get to the red matters because I was pretty far off on the unfinished one. But there we go. A nice pair of boots that we can add. All right. So it's going to be the same deal. Oh, yeah, how are these guys doing? Oh, yeah, they turned liquid. Oh, he's not liquid yet. Okay. Let's see what we can. Ah, uh, pressing all the wrong buttons here. Come on. All right. Bright red. He's down to orange liquid. He's yellow liquid. He's just very hot. And this guy here is still solid. Now the next thing we're going to do is the greaves, I guess. Now the greaves are a little bit different. They require a double sheet and a single sheet.
Oh, I guess I should throw a bit more coal in here. Okay, this guy's about to come through. Bing! And that guy's going to take a while. So I think what I'll do, same sort of thing, is I'll go through and get the rest of these guys, the rest of these ingots all ready. So they're all formed into the... Uh, all formed into double ingots. And then show you from there how we get to double, uh, do double sheets, which are necessary for doing chest plates and for doing greaves. So back in a bit. Rain, rain, go away. Come again some other day. Ah, you're back. What took you so long? Gee. Alright, I got all me, uh, got all me double ingots ready for ye. Got a few sitting there. Oh, I didn't need to use that. Got a few sitting here. So actually, as it turns out, I only have enough to do... Let's see, I can throw one. Did I think I only have enough to do the greaves. So, I'll do the copper chest plate either in another episode or off camera. But So, the first thing we do is we bash this guy into a single, single sheet in the usual fashion. Then we bash another guy into a single sheet. And then we weld them together. And that gives us a double sheet. Uh, actually, while we're here, we might as well bash this guy into a single sheet. All right, so with our double sheet in hand, what do we need to do here? Oh yeah, um, something else is you'll notice there's this area to the right here in the uh, anvil interface, and you can use that to store your uh, store your plans. So what are we making here? We're making the greaves. So we have to end off with a hit. Oh, <laughs> the scrolls float on top of the uh, tooltip. That's not good. Let's move down here. Oh my, do though. There, now they're out of the way. Okay, we have to end off with a hit, a draw, and a bend. So a hit, no, that's the draw. So any of these hits, a draw, and then a bend. So that's going to be a lot to the left at the end. So we have to be a lot to the right. So we're going to do a hit, a draw, ooh, no, and then we need a bend. That's not going to work. So a bigger hit, a draw, and a bend. Ooh, that was not good. We'll have to try something different next time. Okay. And now we bring it up here and weld on the single sheet. And it's the same thing again. A hit, a draw, and a bend. Alright, so... A hit, a draw, and a bend. Eh, well, not bad. Not bad. About the same as the others. At least I'm consistent. And so what are we looking, lo looking like now? Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. Looking a little bit snazzier now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Want to get that chest plate done, though. But alas, chest plate requires two double sheets. So if we look what we have left here, we only have... So we can form a double sheet out of those two, so I'd need one more double ingot. So I've still got a bit of bronze left. I think it's in this guy. Nope. Other guy. You? No. You? There we go. Still got a bit of bronze left in this guy. I'm not sure how much though. But if it's if I have two more ingots of bronze left in him, then I can reheat him and do it. But anyway, so I will uh, do that off camera again. So back in a bit. Okay, I've melted up or smelted down some more uh, bismuth bronze, and I have my fourth double ingot that I need. So now we can finish up our armor making. So we usual sort of thing. Pound this guy into a sheet. Grab another double ingot. Pound him into a sheet. 
weld them together into a double sheet. And actually, yeah, I guess I don't really need to do this yet. Uh, first thing we want to do is form him into the unfinished chest plate. Okay, so this has to end off with an upset, a hit, and a hit. Upset, and then hits. Okay. Upset. Hit. Hit. Pretty close. Not exactly, though. What? Good start. Okay, now we need to flatten this guy into a sheet. And then grab our last double ingot. And flatten him into a sheet. Weld him into a second double sheet. Yeah, mouth flex wheel will be perfect. I got lots more back there, but still, it's just kind of neat to have it work out that way. And again, we need to do upset upset or upset and two hits so I was a little bit off last time so let's instead yeah so with all of them I got to about the same amount I got about I got pretty much the same just as close on all of them <laughs> well like you say consistency and now we can get rid of this wretched copper chest plate that stinks of dead skeleton as if there's any other kind I guess and we have now oh no we should be outside in sunlight for this and now we have our full set of beautiful bismuth bronze armor there we go Yay. All right, well, that's enough for one episode. And uh, this is my knife signing off. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you back for episode 13, where I have no idea what we'll do, but we'll do something fascinating, I'm sure. See you then.